question. Uh, at some point, you'll have to be okay with changing that or come up with, you know, coming up, come up with that language or say that you're okay with a language that someone else uh, gives to you. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. Next up, we have Aaron. Go ahead. I was just going to add that I, I think there are some board installations, although they're pretty rare. I think you could wind up with board installations up there that I don't think would need to comply with this. So just sort of echoing the, the challenge of uh, listing what is either included or excluded. I, I, I think there's challenges with it either way. Okay, next up, we have David. Uh, Aaron just took my thoughts. Uh, a rigid insulation that's pinned to the underside of a concrete slab, does this, this need to apply or not? I, I don't think it does, but um, I'm not sure. Next up, we have Steve. I'm wondering if it would be prudent and time-saving if we table this. I'm assuming tabling is in order. Not there's already a motion in. on the table. That, that is an option. However, there's already a motion uh, on the table. Okay, but he can always, Paul can always withdraw his motion, right? So if we table it and then let Tony and, and staff maybe work out the language so that we're not writing code on the floor and come back at a later time to, to have us look at it since they understand what we're concerned about. Sure, so I would say that in my opinion, a table would not be the right thing if it's just that. You can approve with the intent to modify uh, and then have David and staff modify just that that first type of insulation because that seems to be what what you're concerned about. So uh, and making it more of a code uh, code friendly to cover all insulation. So that would be my suggestion uh, if if we are going to go that route is to not table it but to uh, to pass with the intent to modify with that committee. So. Just keep that in mind, Paul, if you do withdraw your motion, uh, that would be my suggestion to the committee if that's the route you wanna go. Paul, your hands up. Um, yeah, I was gonna suggest that I withdraw the, the motion and move to um, approve, or not approve to, um, yeah, um, I forgot what you, what you said. Sure. Can, so I suggest, can I suggest a motion for you, Paul? Yes. <laughs> um, that you would move to approve as modified uh, with the with the proponent and staff working together to create the modification in accordance with the concern that is expressed here today, most likely creating an exception for those types of insulations that don't apply. Yeah, so the motion would be to um, uh, have the uh, proponent uh, modify the um, proposal um, to clarify installations that um, uh, would require the netting. Okay, great. Is that clear? So there's a yep. There's a motion to approve with the intent to modify the types of insulation that would require this mesh or netting. Next up, uh, we have Steve. Go ahead, Steve. So I, I think you need a second for that. I will do that. Um, and, and ask then, will we then be reviewing whatever they come up with later? Okay. No, you're going to put it in their hands. So there will be, uh, we will ask who wants to be part of that committee, that subcommittee, if you would. Uh, but other than that, you are putting it in their hands that they will do the right thing to take into account what everybody has take, uh, stated today. So the revision will not go through the public process? Correct. This is, this is the, the public process, and it's putting in the hands that that insulation type 
uh, would be discussed and then put into this proposal and that would automatically be approved since you all have approved that committee to do that. A subcommittee, sorry. Okay. Okay, so there's a motion and a second on the table. Uh, any other comments or discussion before we call a vote? Looks like we got almost everybody back. Uh, so I don't know what happened, but uh, Charlie, if we want to, to just confirm, we still have 13 voting members since we got disconnected there. Yes, um, everybody is back in accounted for. And the number is still 13. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. So there's a call to vote. So all those in favor, of approving this proposal with the intent to modify uh, by a subcommittee, the types of insulation that are gonna be required with this mesh netting, please raise your hand. Keep those up, they're still coming in. I see 12, go ahead and lower. Okay, all those opposed, please raise your hand. Okay, one, and that would be 13. Uh, you can go ahead and lower your hands. So this does uh, pass. Now I do wanna ask, uh, I'm gonna lower all the hands. Uh, does anybody wanna be part of that subcommittee? Please raise your hand. So note taker, Charlie, if you please write down Aaron, uh, he would like to be a part of it. Anybody else you're putting, uh, all your hands into Aaron's basket, all the eggs in Aaron's basket. There you go. So we have Aaron, Robert, and Tony. Uh, Shauna also would like to be a part of that. So please take note and we will uh, reach out so that you all can make that, uh, that modification there. All right, thank you. So we'll move on to the next one. Uh, the next one is Kristen. Kristen, are you still on the line? I'm here. Looks like it. Cool. All right. Uh, go ahead and speak on your proposal while I bring it up. <laughs> okay. Um, so this proposal is to amend um, the, the information under, um, I believe it's section 804 for inter interior floor finishes um, <clears throat> to include VOC information. Um, and so, it's just an, uh, an additional um, language about floor coverings, including all site applied um, finishes, including sealants and adhesives um, for resilient flooring, carpet and carpet pad, any paints, stains or varnishes, structural wood panels, hardwood veneer plywood, particle board or fiber board meeting the VOC requirements as well as the California Department of Public Health um, <clears throat> standards for how those VOCs um, are tested. So this really aligns with um, the language that the city of Fort Collins had passed um, in January of 2019. And so we are making this modify, or we are proposing to make this modification to the IBC. Um, and then in the Denver Green Code, we will back that up um, with more information. Um, and you can see that I think there on the second page where that information will now be in the DGC. Okay, thanks Kristen for the summary. I'll turn it over to the general public. General public, anybody that wants to speak in support of this, please raise your hand. Anybody that wants to speak in support of this, please raise your hand. Anybody from the general public that wants to speak in support of this, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll move to opposition. Anybody from the general public that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Anybody that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Third and final call, anybody from the general public that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll pass it over to the committee. So committee, this is your time to ask questions. Anybody have any questions? Please raise your hand. David, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious on the wording, how, how this starts. It, it starts by saying all floor coverings and site applied finishes, including sealants and adhesives and so on. And, and I'm curious if, and the way that's worded, uh, 
the list after including, um, is that meant to be an all-inclusive list? Um, because it, it usually doesn't, that wording in the code wouldn't necessarily, necessarily exclude other stuff. And it starts with saying all floor coverings. So with the all floor coverings, that brings in you know, porcelain tile, hardwood floor would have to meet this, which uh, I don't think makes sense. But um, so just curious if that that's meant to be an all inclusive list or not. Yeah, I think some of those um, like ceramic and porcelain tile, right, don't have a VOC typically. Um, but if they would be applied with an adhesive that would have a VOC, then that would be included. So um, I think, yeah, the wording is a little challenging here. I, I do think that we had um, mimicked what the city of Fort Collins did um, pretty word for word, um, but I um, am open to consider some more clarifications here so that it's very specific to floor coverings as that is what this section in the code is about. It's 804 is, <clears throat> just about interior floor finish and related adhesive sealants or paints or coatings. Like if you had a terrazzo that um, finish that coating on the, on the terrazzo would be included in this requirement. Okay. Any other questions for Kristen? Steven, go ahead. You're Steven, on you mute. are muted. Sorry. Um, my question is if Shauna or someone could pull up where this is in the code. I, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the stricken language. And I guess my question is where the stricken language is and where the stricken language is going to be added. Because I looked on Denver's website to find the Denver green building code and couldn't find this. And I don't even see the reference in the 2019. So I need a little help. It's in the IBC, it's not to the Denver's amendment. So it's in the IBC under 804. It's not letting me share my screen. Um, I have to get permission on it. Okay, um, so let me stop sharing and then you can. Okay, let me share with you. Um, hopefully this works and you can see. So um, can you see section 804 here? Yeah. What, what they're just trying to do would be to under this exception, that it, so that right now it says 804.2 through 804.42. This would say 804.2 through 805. 805 would be the new section on VOCs. And then there's an exception for all of these things that don't have to do 804 through 42. So that's where this wording right at the end of that exception, they still don't have to comply with 804.2 through 804.2. Or two, but they do have to comply with 805. Um, so it's just making this 804.2 through 805, making sure that anything that's already accepted out of 402 through 442 is still accepted, and then adding an 805 uh, because that would be the last section. There's not an existing one. I found that part, Shauna, and I understand okay. that. Okay. But in, in the stricken out section that says. Oh, that's in the Denver Green Code. Well, if you could pull that up, because I sure couldn't find that either to even look at it. Oh, so, boy. so I, I guess I'm, I'm confused. Okay. I'm guessing, Kristen, right? That is that 801.3.9842 stuff is all, was all found in the DGC. That's correct. Or the IGCC, the D. That's in the DGC, I believe. Okay. Um, I'm gonna quit sharing. Okay, you're, you're sharing, okay. So, uh, Shana, we'll give you some time to, to look at that. We got some other questions okay. if you wanna dig through right. that and I'll we can come to back uh, to get Steve. Uh, Keith, you're up next. Uh, thank you. You know, this is, this is gonna create a lot, I don't, I don't know how to put this. In chapter one of the IBC, it exempts, it's, it's work exempt from permits. One of the items is um, uh, item number seven, paint, painting, papering, tiling, carpeting, 
cabinets and other similar finish work. And then Denver has a similar exemption from permit requirements. Uh, we modified it a bit and we say that you don't need a permit for those types of, of finishes unless they're regulated by chapter eight. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but um, I guess if somebody wants to change their floor finish and that's all they're doing, now they need to come in and get a building permit and plans review. And that that's gonna change the amount of work we're required to do. And I wonder how many people are gonna be blissfully unaware that they even need a permit for that type of alteration. I think this is to um, for all new projects, not alterations. New um, non-residential and residential. But that, does it say that? Um, <clears throat> it should, but I don't see that here, do I? No, we should put that in. It should be applicable to all new construction of all occupancy types. Okay, next up uh, for questions, Stephen, you're still up there, just hold tight. Uh, Shauna's trying to find that, but next question comes from Aaron. This my question was, can you describe how onerous this is? I mean, how, how many products uh, are not going to be allowed? I realize it's a very tough question, but can you give a just a general sense of the market for this sort yeah. of thing? Sure. Yeah, how um, onerous is I this? I, it's, it's really not. I mean, with the certification, um, you know, strategies in, you know, in California and other parts of the country, right, they're pushing this um, for all projects. So the market has really responded and this information is, is pretty well known. I would say there's a couple of different um, maybe materials that have some issues, um, but there are few and far between. Um, the Department of Public Health um, is a way of securing the VOC information, um, holding the testing requirements standard so <clears throat> that would be like how it's tested in a certain size room and you're, you know, you're, you're testing the volatile organic compounds over, over time. Um, so that is a little bit more challenging, but I would say that overall, you know, this, this stuff is very easy to find on um, manufacturers' websites. Um, the one that I have had some issues with is um, Terrazzo and um, the coating for Terrazzo. So that's the only one that I've really had an issue with here. Um, you know, all carpets I've never found an issue with. All resilient flooring I've never had an issue with. Um, so we're really looking at kind of the one-offs on site um, type stuff. And even with the Terrazzo flooring coatings, there are many options that do comply. There are just a few um, that do not. Thank you. Okay, hey, uh, before I do we go to the next person, Shauna, yeah. oh, you want to go ahead and share your screen? Okay, yeah. So hopefully this is the right screen. This is a different green uh, code, their uh, baseline. And so in the DGC, you will see section 80139, which is mandatory materials. And so that's what's uh, there all the way down uh, almost all of 80139 and all of its subs are what's being proposed to be um, stricken uh, all the way down through 801394, I think, right here. This is all uh, being proposed to be stricken. There is something on that very last page that says materials mandatory, and I'm guessing that's that's the part that I don't understand. If you look at, I'm going to give you, can you take back the screen and put the proposal up? And this is, could be an error on my part if I had help 
creating this proposal for you, Kristen. But on the very that page right there, so um, you struck everything, but then there's materials mandatory that's left in there and only a few things stricken. I'm just not sure where that lives. I think um, that's in the proposed DGC. So I oh, think that for for that's just showing for purposes so that you guys can see what's being proposed. Somewhere Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I think the idea is to move some of these over to mandatory in IBC and then leave some of the rest of them in DGC. Okay. So, so let's move the ones that are the easiest to get, um, which is, in my opinion, flooring um, into IBC to be mandatory for, for all projects, for all new projects, um, and then leave uh, the other kind of set categories of materials in DGC um, being elective or mandatory, depending on what gets approved. So that would likely be your new 80139 in the DGC right here. That would have a section that says 80139. Correct. Okay. So Stephen, Ron, so and Stephen. Ellie, I don't know if you saw that, so. Stephen, go ahead and see if that answered your question. It does, well, I guess it adds a little more confusion to me. Thank you for finding it, Shauna, because I couldn't find it on the website. So I guess my question is, the Denver Green Code has been accepted. Is that correct? That's my first question. And I guess the next question would be, so we're voting to strike what's listed out of the Denver Green Code and what are we moving into the Denver Building Code other than section 804.5 with the underlying sections? And, and I guess my question is very, very upfront. I, I don't know what responsibility this Building Code Committee has on the Denver Green Code or how it's even been adopted. I, I see it listed, but it, it think, seems like I think that was really for should, for should, reference. Should, should. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think it was really meant there for reference so that you know that um, it's basically moving between codes, so it wouldn't be duplicated. So I think that's just reference information that's being highlighted by Kevin right now. I think what this committee needs to understand is that this section would be added to the IBC to make sure that. Um, flooring, you know, interior flooring, right, and its associated um, adhesive sealants, paints, and coatings would be, uh, would, would have VOC requirements. I, I understand that part. The part I'm struggling with is the 801.3.9, mm -hmm. et cetera, everything that's stricken out. If we vote on this, that I'm, I'm reading that, that we've stricken that out of the Denver mm -hmm. Green Code. And it, gotcha. And it might not pass. And it might not pass, but but we're speaking for another code. It'd be like something being referenced from the mechanical section, and there's a committee looking at mechanical provisions of the code. Right. Why is it here? I, I understand right. the eight hundred four point five, but I don't understand that. And I guess the question is very basic: Do we even have any responsibility to strike eight hundred one point three point nine, et cetera? I don't know that we really are. I think that that's Denver Green Code is doing that. And, and, and so they just showed you that for reference. See, if you look at the very top of that page, it says remove, uh, well, well, somewhere, oh, right, right at the bottom, right there, the highlighted, it's just showing you that for reference to show you that the Denver Green Code is amending all of that. They're just showing you that for reference. Only thing you're doing is taking 804.5 and possibly putting it in the building code. The background on the green code, or the, the green code, and um, uh, the idea has always been that each cycle, things will be taken out of there and made part of the base code, and then they will add new things to the green code. And so um, this is what they're trying to do. Uh, this is one of the things that they're trying to do is to take this this VOC materials out of the green code, put it in the base code, then they'll make their other changes. 
They're just strictly showing you it for reference and you have nothing to do with all of that strikeout. Okay, because I, <laughs> it says remove 2019 mandatory requirement yep. and replace the 2019 prescriptive requirement to build off base code. Right. So that's I to build off base code for the green code? Um, right. So the green code will always take whatever we put in all the base codes and build on top of it, add to it, make it more, you know, more, make it more efficient, more, more green. Right. And so if you look at the sentence right above that remove 2019, which is on the other page that he has highlighted, he's just saying this is what they're doing in the green code. They're just showing you that in this proposal so that you can see it, but you're not having anything to do with it. So they're gonna take this, put it in the base code, and then they'll build on that in the green code, uh, all of what they're doing. So, so Stephen, if it's, a, if it's a little bit easier, it, uh, it should have maybe been put in the supporting information uh, to be less confusing, just to, to you, for you all to know, this is why we are there this proponent is proposing this is because they're taking that out of the green denver green code so think of it that way that it should have probably been listed under the supporting information and not necessarily that you're voting to strike this stuff out of the green code so okay. ho hopefully that helps uh, well, I, my if, apologies if, if i'm if, the only one that doesn't get it but it was very confusing so i, I think no, I absolutely might understand absolutely. what they're doing but i'm having trouble I'll have trouble supporting it as it's currently written. Absolutely. So uh, there's absolutely a possibility to make a motion to move that to supporting information. That's fine too. Just keep that in mind. That? Next, uh, next step we have David. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and Stephen, Steve, you weren't the only one confused. And I think I'm tracking where this is going now. My question now is, has there been a committee that's voted on this in the Denver Green Code, or are we voting and hoping that they also approve this exact same adjustment in concert with what we're going to do? I believe that that hasn't been up to the Green Committee yet, but I also don't, I don't know if um, Denver will also kind of pass some of these move to mandatory to kind of backfill these um, on their own. So I'm not sure if it's going to committee, uh, but it hasn't been heard yet. But I think that's the hope is that if you guys pass this right, then the Denver Green Code um, will, will react and adjust accordingly. Okay, so if, if we vote yes on this, and assuming that all of that Denver Green Code stuff moves to supporting, and we vote yes, and then they make a change, there's a conflict, how's that resolved? Um, so if you approve this, then it goes into building code and then it's not needed in the green code because it's required instead of being in the voluntary Denver green code. All right, and if you vote to disapprove it, then they won't remove it from the green code. They are, the green code will react to whatever happens in all of these other committees. Okay. Is my understanding. We have Keith. Yes, that is true. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm pouring it on, but the Denver green code is not a requirement. We, are, we don't enforce the Denver Green Code. I mean, if somebody elects to design a building in accordance with the Green Code, and currently we have some incentives for people who decide to design in accordance with the Green Code, then they need to follow the standards that are in the Green Code. But it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a law, it's voluntary. So, there's, in a way, there could be a disconnect. We can have things in the IBC that contradict what's in the IGCC. Is that? That's and, from, yeah. you know, I don't know that it matters. I mean, because the one is a, a code requirement. The other is a voluntary standard. 
Uh, so I don't know that I get too hung up on what the Denver Green Code Committee does. Um, it, it's relevant, but it's not law. Thank you. Sure, and I'll just point out uh, for a clarification for the committee that the Denver, if you're not familiar, the Denver Green Code is a voluntary code. And so you can choose to do that. The idea that the city wants to do is that it's a stretch code so that you would go above and beyond in the hopes that maybe the next code cycle, some of those stretch items become mandatory in the base code. And that is what this proposal is doing, is that it's trying to take some of those stretch things that Denver saw be uh, working or whatever. They saw some, some research on that and they wanna make that code now. And so that's what the proposal is, is trying to do, is to move it from the voluntary code to make it mandatory and the regular code. So hopefully that, that helps clarify a little bit uh, what this proposal is about. Paul, you're up next. Yeah, I guess my, my question is, um, this is under the heading of interior floor finish and 80401 also references interior floor finish, but there's also site applied paint, stains, varnishes, structural wood panels. It seems like it's going well beyond flooring, so. I think those are in related, in relationship to flooring. So if you put in wood flooring and you wanted to stain it or paint it, it would, it would relate to the paints or stains around flooring. Remember we're in 804, which is all about interior floor finish. So we're sticking to that, but it's things that are related to the flooring and how it's installed. Okay, I, I might, that might be confusing to people when they read that list. Um, yes. Because painting floors is not very common. It certainly happens. Okay, uh, thanks Paul. Any other questions before we move to uh, the formal discussion period? <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, seeing none. Committee, this is your time for discussion or to make a motion. So feel free to raise your hand if you have either, uh, if you wanna have discussion about this or to make a motion. Steven, go ahead. Well, I guess I'll start with the motion since I started the discussion. I make a motion uh, for disapproval or rejection of this uh, proposed amendment. And it's based on, I, I believe, lack of documentation, some confusion, a reference to a California standard that I haven't had time to, to research significantly. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what happens to some of the references that look like are being deleted from the Denver Green Code, such as E, uh, ASTM E648, NFPA 253, you know, so it, it looks like it, it creates the mandate and I understand it, but I don't believe it's been um, carefully thought through and it almost feels like a, a mandate that would be in the IBC that, that someone's going to have to enforce. So I, I know that's a lot of reasoning, but that's, that's my motion. Sure. All right. There's a motion to reject this. Uh, any discussion or uh, who, who is the second? Steve Thomas. Steve Thomas, okay. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Stephen, I'm gonna lower your hand. I will call a vote then. So the motion currently is to reject this proposal. That is what you're voting on. All those in favor of rejecting this proposal, please raise your hand. Keep those up. Okay, I have 11. Go ahead and lower those hands. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll go to opposition. All those, uh, or sorry, all those abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay, so this proposal is rejected. 
Next up, uh, let's take a break. You know how this works. I'll put 10 minutes on the clock. Go ahead and turn off your camera if you want. Uh, when the clock clicks zero, we will start back up, but uh, feel free to turn off your camera and we'll see you in about 10 minutes. I'm going to sign off, Kevin. Okay, thanks for joining. Sure.
Okay, if you can hear my voice, let's start to make our way back. Turn your cameras on and get ready to look at the next proposals. Alan, I see that you're online. You're up next, so I'm going to move you over to panelist. And then can I also just give a brief thing about all five of these next proposals? Yep, go ahead. So we're back from break. Shauna, uh, you're going to give an update about the next five proposals. Go right ahead. Yeah, so um, the next five proposals all deal with some that it feels like we could almost, well, I don't know if that we could hear them all at the same time, but we started to hear number 10 last time and actually even made the change to number 10. We modified uh, the definition of electric blocks master switch, but then decided to table the whole thing um, to be so that everything could be heard together. So if you really look at proposal number 10, which has all the definitions, the first electric bolt definition could have actually just been included with number 13, because it's the only one dealing with electric bolts. The electric master switch definition could have really been put on 14 and 11, because those are the ones dealing with that. And the shear type magnetic lock is only dealt with on proposal number 12. Uh, so we could have kind of put them all like that. I didn't catch that when I was reviewing all of these uh, in the beginning. But nonetheless, I think the idea that we left with last time was to hear how they're being used and then decide if the definitions are okay. So I just kind of wanted to remind everybody that that's kind of where we left off was, here's how each one of these terms is being used. And now that we've seen how they're being used, then we'll talk about number 10, do we need to modify the uh, definition at all? So that's just kind of where we left off and how they all relate. So 13, 14, 12, 10, and 11, the next five proposals all deal with each other, are all intertwined. The host has turned my video off. If you could turn it back on. This is Steve. Uh, sorry, Steve. Uh, David Wren, I see your hands up. You have a question? Yeah, just a procedural question. Um, would it be possible to uh, kind of hear and vote on these proposals the way Shauna just discussed? Like this first one, can we vote on that in conjunction with the electric bolt definition in the other proposal and, and vote on that at the same time? Yes, that is an option. We would need a motion to hear multiple proposals at once, though. Um, but then there is a process for that to, to hear all those all at once. But we would need a motion for that. Or you could, couldn't you just at the, you could, yeah, I guess so. I was just going to say, or you could propose to modify 13 by bringing over the definition off of number 10, and then you just hear those two together or whatever. But I don't know if you can do, if you could do it that way also. Interesting. Okay, so uh, being that we don't have any motions, let's go ahead and call up uh, Alan. This is number thirteen. Go ahead, go ahead and give us a summary of this one. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Alan Yanong, uh, City and County of Denver Community Plan Development. Um, just a quick overview for uh, this proposal and, and the ones to follow that are, are related. Uh, appendix Q, which was uh, formerly at one point Appendix L from the 2004 Denver Building Code was 
was originally created to address, you know, the base code's lack of regulation for access control. Um, since then, over the you know, each cycle, the IBC has progressed to include requirements for access control. The purpose of the 2019 Denver Building Code Amendment pro process was to move the elements of Penix Q into the base code, uh, meaning that the task was to find a home for all the elements in, in the 2018 IBC uh, that were in the Penix Q without changing to its requirements. And if a home couldn't be found, uh, we created corresponding uh, amendments. So the following proposals, uh, with the exception of possibly 403.5.3, uh, uh, seek to bring back uh, these regulations that have been part of Denver's access control requirements since 2004, and that were, you know, these were erroneously deleted during the last amendment process. Um, process. So the purpose of uh, the amendment to IBC 1010 2.5 is to bring back uh, Appendix Q's restriction of the use of electric bolts. So uh, operation uh, of these types of bolts uh, is done electro electro electrically via solenoid, uh, which will retract the bolt, which is typically installed at the top of the door, uh, allowing the door to open. Um, uh, in case of an electrical failure, the bolt is, uh, the bolt is typically magnetized uh, to retract the bolt into a fail-safe uh, scenario. However, uh, mechanical failure can occur when the door and door frame uh, becomes misaligned, uh, which can be due to things such as building settling or poor uh, maintenance of the door over time. Uh, so once this occurs, the pin can get stuck in a locked posi position, uh, thus rendering the means of egress door inoperable. Uh, therefore, the intent of this proposal is to restrict these types of locks, which has been the case since 2004 uh, and up until it was left out uh, in the last amendment cycle. And uh, I think as we just discussed earlier before uh, the proposal, I think this amendment should be reviewed in conjunction with the first definition from amendment proposal 10, uh, which is a definition for electric bolt, which is verbatim from the 2016 DBCA Appendix Q and has been in the Denver Building Code since 2004. Okay, thanks for that summary. Anybody from the committee, I mean, before we go to the public, does anybody from the committee want to make a motion to hear number 10 together in conjunction with this one since it relates? Julie, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to hear this amendment along with Amendment 10 together, please. Okay, Keith. Um, <clears throat> hi, I, I'd like to move where this added sentence occurs. So I don't know if that uh, complicates Keith, Keith, we're, where... We're... Keith, I'm gonna Keith, I'm gonna cut you off. We're not here for questions on that. We're just we're trying to see if we want to hear number ten together or not with this one. Sorry I will be that. voting against that motion. Okay. All we need is a, mo a motion with the second. Uh, David, you're up. Did you get a second? Uh, second. I did not. Uh, I, I second. Okay, David seconds it. Uh, so, just for the sake of time, we will not go to public comment yet. Uh, Alan, why don't you go ahead and introduce us to uh, item number 10 again, just so we have that while I pull it up. Sure. Uh, so, amendment, or so number 10, amendment to uh, DDCA uh, 202, which is the definitions portion. Uh, the, the relevant one is the first definition for electric bolt, which states a deadbolt type of lock that is electrically operated and is dependent upon power to the project or withdraw the bolt. Uh, this definition is uh, verbatim from what has been historically in the uh, Denver Building Code and amendments and the proposal is to bring it back uh, in conjunction with the referenced uh, as a reference, uh, as it's referenced from 1010.2.5. Can you please? Okay, uh, Shauna, go ahead. Steve Thomas. Um, well, there, there's a point of order, so you have to go with him. Oh, so sorry, I didn't hear that. Steve, you have your audio. Uh, I can, we can't recognize your audio there. You can't recognize my audio? Sound like I'm hearing right now. <laughs> 
It sounds like you're speaking into a fan. All right, how about now? I switch microphones. All right. So point of order is you have a motion. I thought you had a motion to hear the two items together in a second. Don't we need to vote on or discuss that and vote on it before we discuss number 10? It's not it's not a motion that moves to make a change to any of these. So if, as long as we have a motion and a second, we can hear them both together. So no vote. And, and we don't and we don't have to vote on them together. We just want to it's just bringing them out together. So someone once we get to the time, someone can make a motion to not vote on these together. That's completely fine. OK. John, go ahead. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say is the the reason that it was my suggestion that I even brought up hearing the two of them together is because the word the term electric bolt is not mentioned anywhere in the building code, right? And so only in Denver's amendments. And so it should go with this amendment. Therefore, if this amendment doesn't pass, we're not sitting here later on hearing the definition for electric bolt when it doesn't occur anywhere else except for in this one place. And so that's why I, I was making the suggestion to have electric bolt heard with this electric bolt thing because uh, we just wanna make sure that if one passes, they both pass. If one doesn't pass, they don't both pass. Uh, they, yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, so now, uh, now that we heard them both, they both have been introduced together we will open it up for public comment. So anybody that wants to speak in support of either one of these items, number 13 or number 10, please raise your hand. Anybody from the public that wants to speak in support of these, please raise your hand. Anybody from the general public that wants to speak in support of these, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll go to opposition. Anybody that wants to speak in opposition of either one of these, 10 or 13, please raise your hand. <clears throat> anybody from the general public that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Third and final call, anybody that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I'll turn it back over to the committee. Committee, this is your time to ask questions about either one of these, items 10 or 13. Anybody that has any questions, please raise your hand. Keith, go ahead. Thank you. Um, here, here is my concern uh, with where the bolt locks prohibition appears in section 1010.2.5 is that currently the code says you can't use manual flush bolts. And then it there's like, I don't know how many are in the 2021, but there's five or six exceptions that say, well, in these instances, you can use a manual flush bolt. I don't think that those five exceptions should apply equally. I don't think they should apply at all to an electric flush bolt. And so I, I would propose that that change be modified and that sentence that talks about electric bolts being prohibited be relocated to below those five exceptions. And, and I don't know how the mechanics behind that all that well, but but that's my concern is that there we're prohibiting them and, and then we're allowing them in five different applications. Thank okay, you. Keith, Keith. So this since this is a question period, is your question to Alan a consideration to make a change? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, next question we have is coming from Aaron. Yeah, I was wondering about the um, the language in the first sentence simply just saying not permitted. And then in the second sentence, the added, it says shall not be installed, or altered, or repaired. Uh, are there instances, uh, conditions where you need to make that distinction of installed, altered, or repaired? Or would could it simply just be said that they're not permitted and it have essentially the same effect? Alan, go ahead if you want to answer that, uh, feel free. Yeah, I think the intent of that was in case there were, where there are, are existing electric bolts in that you don't have the option to alter or repair, then they would not be 
not be allowed. To say something's not permitted, wouldn't that wouldn't that still prohibited in that situation if you modify something that's prohibited? Yeah, I, I, I mean, from a general aspect, I would I would I'd agree. Thank you. Uh, next question. Next question comes from Yvette. Um, I was just going to pretty much ask the same questions along Keith's um, train of thought, with which is with relation to the amend to the exceptions for this section of the code. Um, so I guess overall, my question would be if, um, consideration would be to relocate it or amend this amendment. It just doesn't really tie into the exceptions. It only talks about manual locks, and it only mentions the electric bolts and the. 10.10.2.5, 10 and then in the exceptions, there's no mention of it whatsoever. And like Keith said, uh, can we or can we not here in as part of this committee really make the, the call as far as how those exceptions relate to those electric bolts? Um, so hopefully that made sense. Okay, so a question to Alan again is, uh, are you willing to modify this and feel free to, to answer that. You don't have to answer on the spot, but uh, just want to make sure that, that you know that there's a question out there. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to moving it after the exceptions. Okay, any other questions uh, for items number 13 or items number 10? This is just question time. Any other questions? Robert, go ahead. Alan, would you be willing to maybe change the wording and amend it to manually or electronically operated flush bolts or surface bolts are not permitted? And then as far as the exceptions go, they all list manual except I believe one in an I-2 occupancy and it's not a door used for egress. Yeah, I think you achieve the same uh, goal as uh, to moving it, uh, mainly because you're relying on manually versus electrically or electrically operated flush bolts. But then if it's electrically, then the definition would have to change or we'd have to make some reference to, to how that interfaces. Okay, uh, any other questions from the committee? Last call? Okay, seeing none. Committee, now this is your time for discussion. So if you want to discuss anything or to make a motion, remember we can make motions to vote on these separately if you want as well. Uh, they don't have to be voted on together, but now is your time to have discussion or to make a motion. David, go ahead. Yeah, just start the discussion off with, with the, you know, elaborate on the exceptions. Um, I think Robert brought up the three out of the five talk specifically about manually operated, so they wouldn't apply. The other one is for patient care rooms, and it talks about a self-latching edge or surface mounted bolt. I, I don't think that meets the definition of electric bolt. So it really only leaves one exception, and that's the first one on doors not required for egress in individual dwelling units or sleeping units. And I don't care what they use on those doors. So I, I think it's fine where it is. I don't, those, none of the exceptions would apply to an electric bolt. So um, even though they you know, appear to, they, the way they're written, I don't think they do. So I think uh, I would support this as, as currently written. Okay, any other discussion or motions? And you can make a motion to modify if you want. Or you can make a motion to vote on these together, to vote on them individually for their discussion. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, I think I agree with Dave, um, but looking at the language, it just seems kind of clumsy, that whole sentence. First it says manually operated flush bolts are not permitted, then electric bolts shall not be installed. Um, it seems like we could just kind of clean that up somehow. I don't know. I'm not sure what the best way to do that is. 
So then it applies that manually operated flush bolts could be altered or repaired. Is that the intent? I don't know. Hey, anybody else? Robert, go ahead. Can I repeat my suggestion for wordsmithing it? It's sure. um, do you want to make a mo do you, do you want to make a motion to uh, modify? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to modify. Uh, amend to manually or electronically operated flush bolts or surface bolts are not permitted or something similar. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to try sorry. to change it, so. I'm trying to raise my hand, but my screen is jumping around, going crazy. So can I just say something to that? Um, I agree with the modification that you're making. However, because you're dealing with a definition for electric bolt, you need to make sure that the term electric bolt stays together. So perhaps you could, instead of saying manually um, or electrically operated or whatever, you want to maybe say electric bolt or manually operated. That way the electric bolt word stays together so that it, because it is now gonna be a defined term if you approve that definition. So I would just put electric bolt first. Electric bolt or manually operated flush bolt or surface bolt are not permitted or something to that effect. Just wanna keep but, that defined term together. Okay. But then we wouldn't need the definition for electric bolt. I think Shauna asked why, Robert. Sorry, why? Well, because it's just an electronically operated flush bolt or surface bolt, and both of those are defined terms, aren't they? She's shaking her head no, but I think she's looking <laughs> looking a little bit further. So uh, we'll come back to that because I, I know it takes time to look that up. So the next question, our next hand that is raised is Steve. So um, Robert, I'm assuming by adding that, and, and is it electronically or electrically is the first question. Because in the definition of electric bolt, it says electrically operated. So that's the first question. Should that be electrically operated flush bolts? And the second portion is, if you make that change, were you also suggesting that the added language in the proposal be deleted or to keep that there? I would delete the language and electronically operated because we wouldn't have the definition for electric bolt anymore. At right, least. and then we wouldn't Way need on. the electric bolt definition in item 13. Correct. Because in the definition he okay. uses electrically operated, so that's why I was asking that question. So, Robert, are you proposing to strike the last sentence as well that says electric bolts, either flush or surface mount, shall not be installed, altered, or repaired as part of your motion? Yes, correct. Okay. All right, so there is a motion on the table. Is there a second on that? Second, to Steve Thomas. Okay, Steve seconds it. Being that there's a motion and there's a second, I can call a vote, call for a vote. Uh, but before I do that, I, I, would, I would like uh, I'm sorry, I could, I could do this first. I was gonna split these up. Uh, so we're just gonna vote on this modification on item number 13. That's all we're voting on right now. So you're voting on the modification on item number 13 to add, to read as, on, as it is on the screen, manually or electronically operated flush bolts or surface bolts are not permitted. That is what you're voting on. Uh, I do see a hand up before I call a vote. David, go ahead. Uh, 
is there a definition of electronically operated flush bolt in in the code somewhere? And should electronically be capitalized then? I'm seeing head shake no that there is not a definition. No, on both, I think. Um it's the only reason manually is 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 I is capitalized is because it was the first word of the sentence, but they're just flush bolts. They're not like a brand name or anything, so they don't have to be capitalized. And they um, it, it's not defined that there's the reasoning here is saying if we say that they're electronically operated, that is defining it enough because the definition, if we did put in the definition, it would just say that it was electronically operated. So you basically don't need a definition is the way that I understood it when they were making the motion. All right, next up we have Keith. I, I, is there a difference in, uh, in the definition between electronically and electrically? Because, you know, the current definition for electric bolt says electrically operated. I wonder if we said in the in 1010 2.5 manually or electrically operated flush bolts. So I don't I don't know what the difference is between electronically and electrically, but electrically is the term we've used all along. I, I would recommend it be electrically. Thank you. Okay, we thanks for that. Um, Robert, we already have a motion. So this is your motion. If you feel so move to to change that uh, speak now, uh, and then we would need Steve to second that if, since he seconded it. Otherwise, we go with the motion with how it's written. Uh, don't you have it written as electrically? And that's no. used? No. No, that's it's not what electronically. The, is it? the screen looks like it says electrically, from what so I see. In the purple? Yeah. Nope, it, it says electric. What is, is your intent to say electrically, electrically or electronically? Electrically. Okay. We can Lord, modify that. Steve. Se Steve. Sorry. Second degree. Steve, you second? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I was trying to mimic what's in 10, 10, 2, 12 as far as wording, so okay. yes. Great, so there is a motion uh, for manually or electrically operated flush bolts or surface bolts are not permitted. So that's the modification, there is a second. Uh, so I will call a vote just on that modification. So all those in favor of just modifying this proposal to that, please raise your hand. I see a, I see 13. Okay, unanimous. So I'll go ahead and lower your hands. So that has been uh, changed in the proposal. Now uh, there needs to be a motion to or discussion uh, for approving or rejecting both of these or one or the other or hearing them independently, voting on them independently. So we need a motion for that. Both of what you mean number motion. 10 just for the word electric bolt or for the whole number nope. 10 so, or now, what? so we have already sorry we have already modified item number 13 so that can be called on to to be approved or rejected or tabled uh, and since we're hearing item number 10 item 10 can be modified it can be approved rejected or tabled and then the other option is that we can split these up and, and vote on these separately. So uh, there's several options for motions here. I see Steve's hands up. I'm going to make a motion that we set we vote on them separately, but continue to discuss them together and then figure out what we do when we get to 13 or 10. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there a second? I second that motion. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so all those in favor uh, of splitting these up and voting on them separately, please raise your hand. 
Okay, 13-0, unanimous, uh, lower them. All right, so we are now voting on item number 13, or, or sorry, discussing item number 13, continuing our discussion for item number 13. It's already been modified. It can still be modified further. However, you all had just voted uh, on that modification. So I, I see a hand up. David, go ahead. Oh, okay, his hand's down. <laughs> Robert, I see your hand up. Uh, I make a motion to approve as amended. Okay, motion. Okay, a motion to approve as amended. Second, Steve uh, Thomas. Steve Thomas seconds, okay. Aaron, I saw your hand go up, but I think that was maybe a second as well. Okay, Steve just jumped to the gun there. All right, uh, so there is a motion to approve as amended uh, and a second, so I'll call a vote. Robert, I'm gonna lower your hand. Uh, all those in favor of approving item number 13 as amended, please raise your hand. Okay, I see 11, go ahead and lower your hands. Okay, all those opposed, please raise your hand. Oh, there's one, okay. Uh, you can go ahead and lower your hand. And all those abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay, I have 11 to one to zero. So this proposal does pass, item number 13 passes, uh, with the amendment there that we have on the screen. So now we've already introduced, we've already had public comment, we've already had questions, uh, we've already heard uh, from everybody. Feel free to now discuss or make a motion on item number 10. Shauna, go ahead. Well, first I think that what they want there, they wanted to hear in order. And so here 14 and 12, but keep keep item 10 open because it, there's more than just one definition on there. You have to hear 12 and 14 before you can, you know, they want to hear them all together and then vote on 10 separately based on what happens in 12 and 14 and probably 11. Um, I, that was my understanding of that. But before we jump into that, I have a question that's come up. When we tabled, oh, we didn't table. We didn't table an item. Never mind. I will. I will talk to Tony separately. We didn't table that item. We voted on it, and it's fresh. And Tony, just for your information, Tony was asking if we could go back and hear the revised definite or the revised proposal that that you had the working group do. Um, so while it's fresh on everybody's mind, but um, it doesn't have to go back before this group. So never mind. Sorry to interrupt there. I forgot we didn't table it. No worries. Okay, so we only had a, a motion and a second to hear items 10 and 13 together. So is there a motion to hear items number 14 and 12 along with these? That was my motion that we voted on a little bit ago. I thought that's what I said is that we vote on them separately, but continue the discussion on item 10 as we go through the other two. Okay, that, that's fine. I thought that uh, originally before we opened up item number 10, that was only to hear 10 and 13 together. That was the original motion. But uh, so if there's one, Aaron, I see your hand up. Uh, for a motion that we hear uh, numbers uh, 12, uh, 12 and 14. Okay. In conjunction. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So, uh, Alan, let's go ahead. I'll open up 14. And I'll open up number 12. The screen's gonna get kind of tiny here for everybody, but you all should have a copy of these as well. But go ahead, Aaron, and introduce item. Let's start with item 14. Uh, I think actually, if it's okay with the committee, I'd like to go to 12 because it has a similar uh, feel to what the, the, the last amendment that was just, pro, uh, was just approved. And so I think while that concept is, fresh in everyone's mind, I, I think it would benefit to hear 12 first and then 14, if that's okay. Go right ahead. Okay. So, uh, uh, Alien Ong, City and County of Denver, uh, Community Plan Development. Um, this is in regards to uh, IBC 1010.2.2.12, 10, uh, which uh, deals with uh, shear type 
uh, magnetic locks. Um, it, the amendment has a similar purpose to the previous uh, amendment 1010.2.5 uh, that was just approved for electric bolts. Um, it, it, basically the same failure issue can occur uh, where misalignment uh, of the door and frame can cause the door to be stuck in a locked position, uh, thus rendering the means of egress door inoperable. So uh, the intent of this um, is, is the same as the previous uh, proposed amendment to uh, restrict these types of locks, uh, which has been the case uh, since 2004 and was recently omitted erroneously in the last amendment cycle. Uh, I, I do, like we've been talking, this should be uh, heard with uh, proposal number 10. Um, I, I do wanna bring up, I uh, did a discussion with uh, a colleague today uh, that um, you know magnetic locks at least in 2015 were located in one section and has since been separated into uh, center release of electric lock doors and door hardware release uh, of electric lock doors. And in reality, this, this restriction really should be in both sections. And so that's a miss on my part, but um, for now it's, it's in the uh, center release. And I think there should be consideration of including uh, the, the same restriction in 1010, Point two point eleven. Okay, is this uh, number fourteen, Alan? Is that correct? This is number twelve, and if you want, I can talk to fourteen now, or if you if you want to wait to discuss this and then jump back to fourteen, it's up to the committee. Uh, well, they they wanted to hear them both, so go ahead. Okay. And actually, let let's go to. Um, uh, public comment. So, Shauna, do you? Have, I see your hand up. Do you have a question? Okay, sorry, I, I'm working on pulling up the right one. I think uh, it's number 12. Sorry about that. I have several up on my screen. Uh, public, uh, now is your time to speak. If you want to speak in support of this proposal, item number 12. Anybody from the general public that wants to speak in support, please raise your hand. Anybody from the general public that wants to speak in support, please raise your hand. Seeing none, anybody from the general public that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Anybody that wants to speak from the general public in opposition, please raise your hand. And last call, anybody that wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, committee, I turn this over to you for any questions. Questions only at this time on item number 12. Okay, seeing none, we will now go to uh, item, I believe, what, what was the next item there? Uh, sorry, on my list. Should be 14. 14, okay. Go ahead and get, uh, give us an intro on that. Okay, a uh, couple errata that I caught uh, in this section. I don't know if it needs to be corrected now or later, um, but I just wanted to point it out. And to revise as follows, uh, sec the section number is an extra one after 1010. Uh, that you really just read 1010.2.7. 10 and uh, under exception three, which this amendment is for, um, uh, the A was mistakenly stricken out before single location. I just wanted to point that out. So um, the amendment of, of this section uh, seeks to specify what the base code language signaled by emergency personnel from a single location inside the main entrance to the building refers, refers to by tying it into the definition of electric locks master switch. Uh, this definition was uh, previously recognized in the 16 DBCA and has been in the DBC since 2004. I believe it's a legacy term that's recognized currently by our access, access control community. And I think building and fire specters also uh, recognize this term. Um, and so the, the desire is to clarify or provide guidance on what that single location inside the main entrances to the building is. Um, like the previous two amendments, it should be heard along with uh, proposal number 10, uh, it should be the second definition uh, listed on that proposal. Okay, thanks, Alan. Uh, we will open up to the general public. Any Anybody that wants to see, speak in support from the general public, please raise your hand. Anybody from the general public that wants to pe speak in support of item number 14, please raise your hand. Third and final call, anybody that wants to speak in support, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll go to opposition. Anybody that wants to speak in opposition of this proposal from the general public, please raise your hand. 
Anybody from the general public that wants to speak in opposition of item number 14, please raise your hand. Third and final call, anybody wants to speak in opposition, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none. Committee, uh, any questions for item number 14, please raise your hand. Any questions for item number 14 from the committee? Okay, we have a question from Keith. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, Alan, um, I think that what you've added, what you're proposing to add is a little different than what was in the 2016 uh, access control uh, provisions. And uh, that is that, and I was working on trying to call out the 2016 Denver Building Code and got partway there. But I, in the past, uh, the doors, were required to unlock upon uh, fire alarm, sprinkler flow, loss of power, or being unlocked by the master switch. And um, the way number three reads currently, some of those fail safe modes have dropped out. And I wondered if you, if that is intentional or, or I don't know. I mean, it, it just looks different to me. Do you, and I, um, it's kind of hard for me to call up the 2000. Uh, anyway, what do you think about that, Alan? Yeah, so this, uh, so certainly for, doors in a high rise condition, we would refer back to, there's a, there's a specific section 403.5.3 that um, speaks to that Keith of a fire alarm, loss of power and signal from the uh, fire command center or possibly the electric locks master switch. Uh, there is a, I believe this wasn't the original intent in 2019 to eliminate those from other doors. Um, there, there are, there is another proposal on, on coming up 10, 10, I think 10, 10.2.7B 10, 10 that addresses this for uh, non high rise buildings greater than four stories that will send you to the high rise requirements. And so the question is really, what are we doing with doors less than four stories? And do they need to be um, is a desire to have it necessarily uh, to be to unlock uh, on power loss or uh, activation of the fire alarm, and currently our code doesn't require that. So that is a little bit different, I believe, from Appendix Q, although maybe not necessarily for buildings under four stories, four stories or less. Um, so I'm sorry, did you, Alan, did you say that there's another amendment that, uh, that applies to buildings that are five stories, but not a high rise that adds in those other provisions? Because where, where does the IBC have a section where we've, they've broken it out into three different categories, one for four stories or less, one five to high rise and then high rise and above. The, the IBC does not have that. Uh, the non-high rise greater than four stories is uh, carryover from appendix Q that was not necessarily accounted for in the last uh, amendment cycle. But you're bringing, you're adding that in in another proposal? If, yeah, can you a, look at proposal number 11, which is um, the one for, that you're talking about that brings in the loss of power and all of that. And then proposal 24, both are on the agenda for today. Um, proposal 24 is the one about uh, the ads exception six for more than four stories, but not a high rise. We are gonna be juggling a lot of balls um, because I think number 11 is, Another one that I would like to tweak, but anyway, okay. Next up, we have Steve. So, Alan, 
the current language says that a signal from the fire command center or from emergency personnel is sent to unlock the doors. Doesn't that already address what you're trying to do here, whether it's via electric lock or some other method? Because that's really the way it's done is with electric locks. Doesn't the existing language always already take care of this? Do we really need this amendment? Yeah, Steve, I would agree that uh, they are saying the same things. I think the desire was to bring back uh, the requirements of what the electric locks master switch was, which will be clear in the definition. That definition was combed over quite a bit at the last hearing. And so it very well could be that that portion does take care of this and specific requirements in the definition of electric locks master switch are located elsewhere. So it's pot, yeah, I would say they're saying the same thing. Uh, I think they're. I think maybe the requirements of the master switch are, are more specific than what's listed in the base code. Okay, any, any more questions from the committee on item number 14? Paul. Shoot, keep forgetting to unmute. Um, the way it's written, it's not clear if the electric lock requirement applies to both from the fire command center or also to, or just to the emergency um, personnel inside the main entrance. And I don't know if that's a code formatting thing. I assume it applies to both, correct? And if it if it's meant to, is it for is it formatted correctly to to? And I guess the other comment is, shouldn't it just be singular via electric lock set of locks? Alan, go ahead. And if you want to answer that, feel free to go ahead and answer that. The intent was to be for both of those, and also the comment about plural on electric locks. So if you can uh, just recap the question, Paul, was did you want it was the intent for the doors to unlock on the signal from the fire command center and the master switch? Was it or is it the question or one or the other? Yeah, is, and then the, back, is, the, is, the, is the electric lock requirement meant to meant to apply to both conditions where it's in the fire command center or the main entrance? So in reality, it, you know, there could be conditions where there isn't a fire command center. And so uh, I think the fire command center, if present, says that is your signal. And if that isn't present, then we, there'd be the requirement for this master switch. And then back to the locks, the S, uh, I'm just maintaining what, what has been in the Denver code. And that definition has always been electric locks, master switch. So I guess my question to Sean or somebody else would be formatting wise, is it clear that that this electric lock requirement applies to both conditions? Well, I guess it also, to me, depends on if the how the definition gets put in because the definition expands to say, you know, the fire command center or other approved location and it gives a little bit more info in there um, i guess what i would say is you guys need to specify your intent before we could you know if it's not clear to you then does it if it's not clear to you as the reader then you need to make a modification so that it makes it clear to you <laughs> The next question we come, uh, comes from Yvette. Yeah, so when we were looking at amendment and in our last session, we talked about the electric locks and master switch definition potentially being revised. And I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, Alan, you said you were gonna work on a redraft 
if you did, do you have that? Maybe that'll help us during the discussion here with this amendment 14. I just wanted to bring that back because I do remember we talked about revising it when we met again, but I think you also mentioned that you were going to try to redraft it by the time we met again. I don't have a redraft uh, up front. Uh, I don't. So it's something if I promise that I apologize. I don't I don't have one prepared for the committee today. Next up, we have Robert. I just had a quick question. How would we unlock all the doors simultaneously unless we have something like a single switch master switch? Anybody want to jump in on that? Uh, no one uh, has an answer to that. So uh, next so, up, question, uh, go ahead. Did someone have sorry. a comment? So if, if we don't have any other methods, why do we need to add that verbiage? Sure, that's a, a question to the group uh, to consider. It sounds like next up would be Paul. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna comment to uh, Robert's question. I think the intent was to be able to tie that back to the definition, which has further clarity as to uh, what the require specific requirements are for those. Um, so if that doesn't go in the definition, then it needs to go somewhere else. Okay, next up, a uh, question from David. Um, no, I was just going to respond to Robert's question. I think uh, Paul summed it up that, you know, the base code just says a signal. And by adding in the electric clocks master switch that's defined, um, we are adding in, you know, more, more requirements of what that signal is, is my take on this. Okay, thank you for that. Any other final questions on item number 14? Okay, seeing none, it is now time for the committee uh, to have discussion on items 10, items 12, and items 14. Uh, don't limit it to discussion. It could be a modification. It could be a motion. I'm trying to put them all up on the screen <laughs> for you. Uh, like I said, it's going to get kind of a little crazy here, but we're this is the opportunity to make a motion or have discussion on items 10, 12, and 14. David. Yeah, I want to make a motion on item 12 just so we can clear that off the plate, because I think it's a, a simpler one <laughs> before we move on to the rest of it. Um, so item 12, if I'm not mistaken, that's the one about the shear type magnetic locks. Yes. Um, I would like to uh, make a motion uh, to approve with the intent to modify. Okay, and what's the intent? To, uh, what are your, your intent to modify what section? The modification would be to, the modification would be to add the same added language as item seven to section 1010.2.11. So the same you know, prohibition on shear type magnetic locks um, applies if you have a, a hardware release of a magnetic lock, as well as a sensor release of a magnetic lock. Okay, so just so I wrote this down correctly, <laughs> uh, it's to the motion is to approve with the intent to modify to make it as the same as the definition of item seven, 1010.2.11, is that correct? 
Yeah, the, the same verbiage would be added as item seven to 1010.2.11. Okay. I see a number seven on 1010.2.11. There's one through six. Yeah, we're adding it. This is all added language. So it's a new number seven. Right. Yes, I, I get that, but I'm just trying to see what he's saying, trying to match the wording, and now that's what I was trying to match the wording of what you see on the screen for item nine. Okay, next up is Aaron. A second. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay, second. Sorry. Uh, Robert, uh, your hand is up next. I just had a question for David. Should we add that to 10.10.2.13.1 also? Is that delayed egress systems? Yeah. Or is that necessary? I don't think so. If you have a, a delayed egress that adds a mag, not, mag lock as part of it, I think you still have to meet the requirements, those other requirements. Um, so I, I think you'd still get there. Okay. Next hand is Paul. Yeah, I'd like to see the language cleaned up on this one as well. Um, you know, alterations and repairs are not really part of the IBC and to match language elsewhere. So we could just say shear type magnetic, magnetic locks are not permitted. Okay, uh, so David has a motion. If David's okay with that, uh, we can make that change. I'm fine with that. I'll second that and add that, add that to my motion. Okay, so we're going to make a friendly suggestion that it just say shall not be permitted. Just delete installed, altered, and repaired, and just say shall not be permitted. I think that's what Paul just suggested, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I suggested. Okay. Actually, the I, other languages are, are not permitted. Yeah. For what it's worth. <laughs> I like consistency. Okay, great. <laughs> Great. And Aaron, since you were the second, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Be ahead now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next hand. Robert, was your hand still up or did you have another question? No, I forgot to take it down. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Tony, you're next up. Tony, you are muted. Tony, you're muted. There you go. Sorry, I probably should have asked this earlier, but Dave, do you believe that language exists for uh, magnetic locks installed prior to 2004? So I think that was the intent of the original committee was to capture those that were installed before we had regulations. You know, that predates my time at the city here, Tony. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but. I know we have Keith Peets on the line, but I believe that was that was the intent of that language to not allow them to be repaired as existing equipment prior to our regulation. So shall not be permitted would capture anything new going forward, but wouldn't acknowledge everything installed prior to 2004. Okay. Next up, uh, David, think about that. We'll, we'll continue on. Yeah, Next I, up, we have Paul. I can have one comment on it quick. Um, okay. Uh, you know, it really that that issue, if, if we want to address it specifically, should be in the existing building code. Um, as written now, the existing building code would say alterations have to comply with the IBC. Um, so, so maybe we get there. I don't know. If you're just doing prescriptive requirements in the existing building code, you 
alterations. There, there's probably a repair section that might allow it um, to just be repaired, but not altered. Okay, next up is Paul. That was essentially gonna be my comment is, shouldn't that be in the I, IEBC then? Next up is Keith. I, you know, I think the Sherlock's have, it, it probably goes back more likely to 1994. Uh, but what about the electric uh, mag Sherlock uh, that was installed in 1976? I don't know if there's any around like that, but anything's possible. But it's been uh, earlier, at least 10 years earlier than 2004 that that, that was never, uh, allowed that I'm aware of um, in the last 30 years. Okay. Uh, so I see no more discussion. Uh, sorry, David, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just reading the edit, and it, I think it might there might be a mistake in the edit. Reading shear type magnetic lock shall not permitted. You know. I'll update that. Thanks. Okay, uh, so there is a motion and a second, so I'll call a vote. I'll recap what you're voting on because <laughs> it's we're, we're getting a little crazy in terms of how many things we have going on. So I'll make sure everybody knows what they're voting on. <clears throat> so there's a motion to modify the current proposal number 12 to read uh, the item number nine. There is shear type magnetic lock shall not be permitted with a further intent to modify to match the verbiage of item seven uh, in section 10.10.2.11. So that is what you're voting on just for that, those, um, uh, or I'm sorry, that's what you're voting on, to approve as modified with the intent to further modify. So that is what you're voting on. Any questions on that since it's a little bit, uh, uh, loaded there. I see a hand up. Robert, go ahead and talk. Um, can we have David clarify? I don't think that's exactly what he said. I think he's adding 0. 0.7 to 10 to 10, 10 to 11 and matching the verbiage that is existing on the screen there. That's correct. Adding item seven, which would read the same as this item nine. To, to okay. another section. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for clarifying. So we're adding item seven uh, to match. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we go to I call a vote on that because it was a little confusing there. Okay. All those in favor of approving that, please raise your hand. Okay. I have 12. Go ahead and lower them. All right, all those opposed, please raise your hand. Let's see any. All those abstaining, please raise your hand. See any. So this passes 12 to zero to zero uh, with that modification and the intent to modify further. Uh, so that's item 12. Now, uh, now that we got 12 out of the way, we are, still have items that are open, uh, which are items number 10 and items number 14. So at this time, there can be a motion for those or further discussion. Items number 10 and items number 14. David, go ahead. So with the change that we already approved to number 12, is there any need for the definition of electric pole? An item, so you're talking about an item number 10 there? Yes, sorry, 10. Okay. Uh, yeah. One answer? of, no, one of the, so the previous, right. yeah. 
it was discussed when the modification was made that the, the reason that they said to, they changed it to electrically operated was so that we didn't need this definition. So that could, when, when you guys vote on number 10, you could modify that out. Thank, thank you. Okay, any other discussion or motions for items number 10 or I can't remember which other one, uh, 14. It doesn't feel like you could, personally, I don't think that you could really do number 10 until you deal with number 14 because you either have to take all of this definition and put it in 1010 or you have to deal with the arguments that you guys have been posing on number 14 before you do something with the definition, so. Okay, next up is David. Um, yeah, I want to talk about item 14, um, which is the one on the screen. Um, just wanted to float this by the committee to, to clarify that this electric locks master switch um, applies to both the fire command center situation as well as the, the single location inside the main entrance. Um, would it clean it up if we... We deleted the added language, but then add in the words electric locks master switch right before signal in both locations of signal. So it'd be unlocked simultaneously without unlatching upon a or upon an electric locks master switch signal from the fire command center if present or an electric locks master switch signal by emergency personnel. Is that, would that clean it up? So David, just to save time, is that a motion to make those changes? I'm just floating it right now <laughs> for discussion. Okay. So sure, that's fine. I, I, I changed it on the screen for now so everybody can see what you're talking about, but there is no motion on there. Paul, go ahead. Um, the other thing that seems like I might need cleaning up is the definition of electric locks master switch talks about the location. It says it shall be in the Billings Fire Command Center or other approved location. So that seems kind of redundant between those two. So we could either take it out of the definition or take it out of the um, section, but it doesn't seem like we need it in both places. And... Yeah, I can comment on that, Paul. Um, it's a little tricky because this is also referred to in section 403.5.3 for high rises. And that, that one doesn't specifically give the locations, but we could certainly modify it to include it and then and then delete the location part out of the definition. I think that would be a fine, you know, we, we'd have the requirements where they belong and then get, get some of those requirements out of the definition. I think we can make that happen. Okay, next up we have Tony. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to further modify since the switch is intended for emergency personnel. We should be specifying that it should be located at the fire alarm control panel location. So there's coordination of all emergency switches at that central point. And it usually is near the main entrance at any building in current code. Okay, uh, so that, that's good. Uh, unless you want to uh, add that specific language somewhere, uh, we can. So I, th I think but, after uh, seeing the location, um, say something like at the fire alarm control panel. Okay, I'm still trying to yeah. follow you here. Item three, last sentence. So it'll say um, 
via an electronics master switch signal by emergency personnel from a single location at the fire alarm control panel? Correct. Inside the main entrance. Thank you. Sorry, I was having trouble following. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, next up we have Paul. Uh, your hand's still up. I don't know if you still, looks like your hand. Sorry, I just didn't lower it. Going down. <laughs> okay, next up we have Stephen. Might be a friendly amendment, Tony, but um, a concern that I have is we want, we want this releasing mechanism to be in a secured location in a fire command center. I agree at a fire alarm control panel location. But should we add some language that says secured? So the same language you proposed, but I don't think we want to switch just on the wall next to the firearm control panel that anybody could press the button and because it will probably be identified. So uh, I believe there's already another section that talks about putting in a secure key switch so that it's not tampered with. Okay. Dave, Ren, do you remember what section that is? It's already existing. It's it's actually in the definition, which I think we need to fix it because uh, it uses the word may instead of shall. But the definition talks about a non secure area. Use a two position key operated switch. May be used if we just change the may to shall. I think we've we take that take care of that in the definition. As Gil, as Gilda Radner would say, never mind. Okay, next up is David C. Just minor point. I think we're revising item three, right? Not item four. And the revised uh, yes, that is. Does that need to be? Does that need to be changed here? He is modifying number three. Right, but under revise as follows, it says modifying item number four. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Good catch. I see what you're saying. So. Yeah, you're revising this section by modifying item, item four. Uh, and then with the exceptions, we are discussing modifying item number three uh, within the exceptions. So your question is, are we modify, Are we looking at item four total or are you item number three of this section? Is that what your question is? Yeah, should it say exception number three, just to be clear? Yes. So this, uh, uh, Sean, what, did you have something to add? Well, I was just saying, it, it, it really is, we, that's what you're, you're looking at 10, 10, 2, 7, stairway doors, and it's being amended to modify exception number three. Right now it says to modify item four, but it isn't modifying item four. It's always been modifying item three, but it really is an exception number three, not an item. So it, he's just saying, can you say, call it what it is instead of saying is amended by modifying item four, it's amending to modify exception number three. Yeah. Does that capture it, David? Okay, great. Uh, David R. Um, so what you just changed there, you also got to strike out, modify an item four. Or by, or sorry, leave modifying, strike out item four. Um, and then I just had a question for Tony on, on the proposal with the fire alarm control panel. Um, this exception applies to any height building under a high rise. A high rise would use exception two. 
Um, exception three would use this one. So you, you could have a two-story building that uses this. Are there cases that would not have a fire alarm control panel? I guess there could be, but not likely. Yeah, I just don't know enough about the fire alarm requirements. Because I mean, we could change it instead of um, adding that language, um, say a single approved location with approved in italics. So a single approved location inside the main entrance. Yeah, I, I think the, the challenge, Dave, becomes that fire isn't involved in any of your access control permits or inspections. Sure. And I'm not sure your construction okay. inspectors would know where to place it for fire department use. Okay. Well, this covers you know, most, if not all of the jobs, we, that's fine. Could you just add or other approved location like is in the definition at the fire, con fire alarm control panel or other approved location inside the main entrance? Yeah, Tony's point, I think uh, they're not involved with it and he doesn't want us approving the location. <laughs> I think it's fine the way it is. It's fine. Okay, next up we have Paul. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering if we could clean this up a little further and get rid of that second electric lock master switch by saying, um, after fire command center, if present, or from a single location and just strike out all the rest of that. Doesn't that get us to the same so you, place? So you're saying delete the highlighted section? Yeah. Okay. As we talk about the emergency personnel in the release, allude to it in the definition. Okay. Uh, David, was your hand still up? Do you have another question? Oh, no, sorry. Okay. So we, uh, we have made some changes, even though there's not a modification or a, a motion uh, in hopes that maybe someone would make a motion with these changes. <laughs> Uh, for the for the sake of time, we don't have to, but uh, I, I want to say that you all had, had discussed this. So, um, if there's a motion, that would be great. If not, we can keep discussing. David R. I want to make a motion to approve as modified, as shown on the screen in purple. I guess it is. <laughs> okay, great. I, I second uh, that motion. Keith, okay. great. Thank you for the second. Any discussion, anybody else? I don't see any hands. Okay, with that, I will call a vote. So you're voting on just the modification part. You're not voting on approval. Uh, so all those in favor of approving these modifications as written on the screen, please raise your hand. Okay, I see Tim, go ahead and lower those. All those opposed to that, please raise your hand. Okay, I see one, go ahead and lower it. And I noticed All a note in the things. chat that Steve Thomas has left, so you know, left a vote. Okay, anybody abstaining, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, so that modification passes 10 to one. Now, there, uh, now that the modification has passed, is there a motion for this proposal? You can uh, approve the proposal. You can reject the proposal. Uh, David R. A motion to approve is modified. Okay, next up is Aaron. A second. Okay. Uh, and then all hands are down. Any discussion? So there's a motion to approve as modified. All those in favor, I'll call a vote. Please raise your hand. I got 10, you can go ahead and lower.
All those opposed, please raise your hand. Zero. And all those abstaining, please raise your hand. One. Okay. Go ahead and lower your hands. Uh, so this proposal passes as modified item number 14. Now, we are past our time. However, we still have one more item that is open. Uh, so item number 10, we've already had that. We, now it is time for any discussion or motions uh, for item number 10. I think it's this, oh, there we go. Uh, any, oh boy, my computer's closing. Um, any, any discussion or motions for item number 10? Would it be, I, I, I would just make a suggestion that because there's been so much discussion about how much the definition of electric lock master switch needs to change. Plus we still have item number 11 that uses that term. I would suggest tabling the item, but that's not, I can't. Okay. Any motions? Paul. I don't have a motion, but is there a way we can capture the, <clears throat> I know in a month I'll forget what we've done. I think we want to strike electric bolt and at least take the location sentence out of electric locks. Is there, we can capture that for now and still leave it open. Uh, unfortunately, we we could well i'm trying to think so we could someone could make a motion to do those two items and then table it from there um that's a possibility as long as that motion passes uh for those modifications all right i would we move we um Oh, to table this proposal with the modifications to delete the definition for electric bolt and delete sentence two from electric locks master switch. So the highlighted section? Uh, yes. Okay, so the motion uh, would have to be to amend this first and then to table it. So I assume that's what you want to do, Paul. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, David R., go ahead. Um, if Paul's okay with it, I'd like to further modify it and then second the motion. And the further modification would be to change in the last sentence, change the word may to shall. Um, so we deal with that secure or non-secure situation that you, you would make it half, you'd have to provide this, um, you know, two position key operated switch if it's in a non-secure location. I'll accept that. Okay. So there's a motion and a second on the table to modify this proposal. Any discussion? And does this leave None. in, does this leave in the, the words in parentheses? I know you guys voted on it last time, oh. but it seems like it failed six to seven to take those words out last time. And so, uh, and then we ended up just tabling it. Um, Paul, do you mind if I further modify? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Um, so I proposed that last time just to take out the, the parenthetical phrase or all the words in the parentheses, just because that's not, you know, that's not how codes are written. <laughs> okay. And Paul's okay with that. So we got a, a motion in a second still on the table. Keith, go ahead. Well, are there any other changes to discuss? It looks like we could maybe we just vote on this now. I, uh, Julie had some concerns, I think, about the definition and code requirements being in a definition, but maybe they've all been removed. I'd like to vote and be done with it. Thank you. Sure. So the group can take that in consideration after we vote on the modifications. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call a vote. Uh, 
Charlie, just real quick, can we make sure we got an accurate count of voting members? I think it's, there's 11, but can you just verify? Yes, uh, that one's correct. Okay, great. So there's a motion and a second on the table to modify this proposal. Uh, and the modifications are, are on your screen currently. All those in favor of those modifications, please raise your hand. Okay, 11, unanimous. So those modifications pass. So everybody lower your hands. Okay, now that, that those modifications have passed, there can be a new motion from the floor here, whether to table, approve, reject, uh, anything like that. Keith. I move that we approve this as modified. Thank you. Robert? I second. Great. Any discussion? Uh, David R., go ahead. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to, to just voting on this now. Um, the only caution is we still have 40353 that uses this definition. And since we pulled out the location part of it, we're going to have to make sure that we get that covered in that section. Um, so just keep that in the back of your minds. Uh, um, you know, if we decide to table it, then we could kind of keep this open if we needed to. But um, as long as we keep that in the back of our mind, I think we're okay approving it. Thanks for that commentary. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, I will call a vote. The motion is to approve this proposal with the as modified on the screen. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, I have 10. Go ahead and lower them. All those opposed, please raise your hand. One. Okay, go ahead and lower, and I think that's all of it. So 10, it, this proposal passes uh, as amended, 10 to one to zero, uh, and we will call it a night from there. Thank you all for your dedication and your extra time on there. Well, that was a lot to get through to, to hear all four of those at once. That's great, but it needed to happen. It really did need to happen. So thank you for your patience and staying over tonight. Uh, maybe next time we'll be done 10 minutes early. Who knows? But uh, I'll stay on the line for any criticism, yeah, good, good or bad, but uh, I'll stop the recording. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.